So today we will talk about scoliosis. Scoliosis can happen from a very small child as a newborn baby to an adult. What we mean by scoliosis is there is a, a small bend in the spine. What, we, what happens if we leave them alone? Spine, when it is bent, as you all know that it is going to cause a mechanical problem, causing back pain. And cosmetically not acceptable, so they are all psychologically disturbed because when they compare with their peers, they have a very nice beautiful spine and a crooked spine makes them depressed. Even more important is the lung function. If the spine gets bent more and more, more you would see that the efficiency of the lung functioning becomes less. When the efficiency of the lung function becomes less, the, the outcome of, of any work becomes compensated, compromised. So, in short, the in identification of the scoliosis early is very important. How it can be done? The simple way of doing it is ask any child to bend forward, look for any hump or asymmetry in the back. This is the earliest and simplest way any parent can do, even before they could see a doctor. Once they suspect that there is a hump or when you look at the child from behind, the shoulder levels are not equal and there is an asymmetry in the shoulder height. These are simple ways of identifying or suspect the child may be having scoliosis and that is the time when you have to go consult a doctor that is particularly a spine specialist and from then on requires periodical evaluation whether the progression is happening or it is static. The important lies in early detection. Once it's early detected, the spine can be corrected significantly. The more important point is rather than correcting it to a straight spine, it requires a more balanced spine. The technology is helping us to deliver more good results, more balanced spine. How we do it is because we are now doing all the fixation using a navigation or CM guided devices. And one step further, what we have done is we do the 3D printing of the spine and design the jigs or the templates or placing screws so that it can be very precisely placed without compromising the results. The other important aspect is the spinal cord monitoring. The how, however stiff it may be, it can be stretched based on the neural elasticity. If the neural structures can accommodate significant amount of stretch, it can be done, but it has to be monitored by both spinal cord, intraoperative spinal cord monitoring as well as the wake-up test which we do during the procedures. The child, once they are done, has to have a periodical evaluation because the spine can bend further if they are not fused properly. So it has to be periodically evaluated. When they are periodically evaluated, we know that the amount of activity which, get, which they can be put into. There are lots of doubts regarding whether they can be behave as a normal individual. The answer is yes and it has to be graduated after one step after another to do the normal routine activities. The other important aspect is the lifestyle modification. If somebody wants to do certain sport activities like gymnastics, we would restrict them because the spine has now become a single unit because of the fixation. The most important aspect is regular follow-up and early detection in scoliosis. Thank you. Once we identify a child with scoliosis, how do we treat? That we have a team of specialists who examine the children. One involved is the pediatrician who evaluates whether there are any associated anomalies from the cardiac, the renal, liver. All this is a thorough evaluation is done to identify any congenital anomalies. Then we work with the anesthetist to know whether the child is fit to undergo a major procedure. 
the nutritionist then it gets involved and says the nutrition aspect the wound healing is good all these things are being cleared then we take them up for surgery then how long have they have to stay in the hospital usually they have to stay in the hospital for 5 days the os- the operating duration might vary from 4 to 5 hours the other concern is about blood transfusion we usually use the cell saver system to so that we can use the same patient's blood for that but uh, instead of donating the blood from the blood bank once the procedure is finished they can be made to walk in a couple of days with around the bed and in the corridors in the hospital when they are able to take care of themselves for their personal hygiene and they can move on the bed they are discharged usually by fifth day we would like to see them before they would leave uh, the uh, for next one week because at least the one the he- wound heals we would say that they are fit to fly or go back to their uh, back go back home the other thing which we expect is once they go back home they can be stay in touch with us over the email or any sort of whatsapp they progress uh, on a day to day basis or whenever it's necessary after a period of 6 weeks we it will be the next follow up and if there is no problem then we see them after a period of 3 months from that particular visit so that we expect them to see them every year after that as the child till the child completes their growth